Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, I introduced myself. Now I'll introduce what I've got in my hands. This is a buck saw. Not the one I sharpened for George. This is one that I keep. So I'll show you how a buck saw works when you're actually sawing with it. First, I have to tighten up the cable. Doesn't be any, need to be anything more than hand tight. Yes, a chainsaw is faster. Chainsaw may be a little less work doing the actual cutting, but I can carry this a lot further than I can carry a 20 pound chainsaw, tank of gas, can of oil, and an extra chain. That's the stuff that you need, also the wrenches. That's the stuff you need to run a chainsaw with. With this and a good triangular file, I can go out in the woods and cut wood all day and sharpen the, the blade if I need to, although they don't dull that quickly. The only problem I have is I'm getting old and it's getting harder to do this. When I was 14 and I first got introduced to a buck saw, I was panting just about this hard after that much cutting because the saw was bone dull. With a nice sharp saw and a little bit of technique, it goes much better. Something I wanted to show you, this cross buck that I used to hold the wood has a built-in advantage to it. When I'm using this cross buck, if I have it sitting this way, because I made it out of two by fours, there's an inch and a half between the face of this and the face of that. When I put the wood on there, the wood is up against this and it's up against that, but this is an inch and a half and away. So as I'm sawing, I can do a full stroke. I can do that without running into this board and do a full stroke. Now I did scratch up the end of the cross buck a little bit, but that won't damage anything too bad. So there's a side that you want to stand on when you're doing the cutting. This way, whether you're right-handed like I am, or left-handed, it works the same way. It lets your hand go past without hitting that board. Like I said, this is nice and lightweight. Got a good sharp blade on it, and it cuts really well. The other thing that I see people doing is they're trying to cut something in the middle, and it works. But you tend to hit the buck. The saw buck is not meant to be cut. I had one over at the old house that had been there a long time for me. And I ended up leaving it there. Thinking it wasn't worth moving. Later found out I had a use for it and didn't have it. But in any case, if you're running a chainsaw with a cutting the log in between here, the likelihood of cutting into one of these cross pieces is very high. So there's an advantage to knowing your tools and thinking about what you're doing as you're doing it. The other thing is, you always want to remember to loosen this when you're done cutting. Because if you don't, you either break these, wreck those joints, or snap off the top of the ear. Either one of those 
or any of those is bad business. You don't want to do that. So that's how I use a buck saw. And when I wanted to make a full cut, it's so I use the full blade. If I do a short cycle cut where I'm just cutting a little bit, if I'm making a cut like this, and for some reason, whoop, gotta tighten the blade up. If I'm making a cut and I short cycle it, like that, it still cuts, not as fast, and it also so dulls off just this much of the blade. So people say, well, only this part of the blade is dull. So they sharpen this part and leave that alone. Pretty soon you got a saw with a big old belly in here. Then you're trying to lift that when you're cutting. Instead of making a nice, smooth, full throw, Like that, you're trying to climb over that notch if you try and do that, so people just end up making shortcuts and they waste half their saw blade. Now, if you don't have enough reach to actually push the saw all the way through and pull it back in a good manner, okay, you can either step back or tie down the piece of wood, use both hands so that you can push that blade all the way down. Take your time, work the saw, and let the saw do the work. You don't have to bear down on it hard. You don't have to push or struggle. If the blade's sharp, it cuts. All you have to do is just drag the blade back and forth through. I wasn't pushing down on the blade. I wasn't trying to force it. All I wanted to do is put pressure on the handle and run the blade through the wood. Now, if you've got your wood anchored in a way that, say you got a bigger log than this little one in the cross buck, and it doesn't bounce around on you, doing this two-handed seems like a really good idea. But I found I'm better off doing it one-handed because I can do a full stroke, whereas this way I got this hand shortening the stroke that I could normally do this by just turning my body. I can turn my body and run that blade further. If I got both hands on it, then I'm stopped here unless I turn my body and then it pulls the blade off to the left. So one handed with your hand up above the blade so it's balanced and you're putting the, the power to the blade steel itself so it's doing the work and this will cut just fine. When I first started looking at these, thinking I wanted to get one, even though I hated the one Dad had when I was 14, 
I found them for five bucks. Of course, most of them had broken limbs. The blades were always dull and quite rusty because people hung them on the outside of the shed on a couple of nails and just left them. The reason they were broke is because people didn't loosen up the tensioner and it put pressure on the wood. The reason they were rusty is because they sat outside without anything on them. The reason they were dull is nobody bothered to sharpen them. And the reason they got hung on the wall is because they were dull and rusty and broken. So one thing goes with the other. Over the years I've found some that are in fairly good shape. This is the last one I bought. It cost me all of $15, which is three times more than what I bought the first one for. But that was 20 years ago. And we've had clowns in office a lot since then. So the price of everything has gone up. People have borrowed 34, 35, 36, wait a minute, what is it, one o'clock? 39,000, 39 trillion dollars. So when you give an idiot a credit card and say, go have fun, you pretty much got what you got. But this saw is in good shape. I'm going to sharpen the blade on it. Not today, probably not this summer. But I'm going to sharpen the blade on this one, so I'll have two. There's another one downstairs. It's not in quite as good a shape, but it's here. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. And I try and answer them. Even those, yes, I do answer those. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or the legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.